when you think of my dad, your son, what's one word that would describe him best? Passion. He was enthusiastic about everything. He just enjoyed doing things. He was very happy. He was very friendly to everybody. He had lots of friends. We didn't have to encourage him. We didn't say, would you like to do this or put him on that team? He just wanted to do it from the very beginning. And so it was his passion that I think was his number one trait. When we're, we were on the air, we just, we just had fun. And we talked hockey for three, three and a half hours. And during the good times, you know, my, my right shoulder and right leg were bruised because of how excited he was when something well happened. We, we score a goal, we get a big win. He's just pounding on me. I felt the brunt of his, of his force at that time. We just hung out together, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and let's go to the rink, you know, and let's do it again the next day. It was a lot of fun. Rob had the ability to make friends and deep friends. And I think his master ability was his ability to make you feel important. One of the qualities that I loved most about my dad, and a lot of people talk about how he was everyone's fr best friend. My dad for me was that guy that always checked in on me. Every single night he'd come over to my room and say, you good D? I'd say, I'm good dad. Every single night, no matter what. We were playing at Yost Arena in, in, at the University of Michigan. And uh, the WCHA at the time, had mandated head contact rules. You can't touch the head or it's an automatic five minute major. Well, there was a, an instance where we were positioned at Yost Arena. We were basically right over the top of the ice. And so Ryan Suter just drilled a guy against the boards and to, to free the puck and they both went down. And we're, we're looking down, we're, I'm calling the game and stuff. And there were no penalty, the guy, there was no penalty. Well, then Ryan put his hand on the guy's helmet to brace himself so he could get up. And then the referee put his hand up and said head contact and gave Ryan a penalty. And so your dad, because we're right over the ice, yanks off his headset and starts berating the official. And the official clearly can hear him. And just, I mean, things I cannot repeat, right? And just berated the guy. Well. At the, at the same time, I'm, I'm in awe of Rob, waiting to, you know, I, I'm, I can't pot him down. I mean, all these things are going over the air. It's probably illegal. You know, FCC is getting involved. Oh my gosh. And next to us was the supervisor of officials and just looking at Rob with his jaw dropped like, and we just let that go. It was just one of the funniest things. I'd never seen anybody react like that before in, in a broadcast booth. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. But nothing happened after that. Yeah, yeah. I think we lost the game. Well, I'm pretty sure we lost the game. But whatever, whatever. He started at his first Wisconsin hockey game at four weeks of age. And from that time on, living next door to Bob Johnson, the famous Wisconsin hockey coach, he just loved Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin. His brother went to Wisconsin. My brothers and sisters all went to Wisconsin. He just grew up in an atmosphere of, of loving to go to Wisconsin. And from the time I can remember, Rob wanted to be a Wisconsin hockey player. I remember I was in the room with my dad and my mom. When I committed, my, I looked over and I saw my dad and he had tears in his eyes. And that was when I immediately knew that was the perfect decision. That was exactly where I needed to be. And that kind of fueled my fire for the next four years. And then once I finally got to Madison, it, it was right. It was completely, it felt, it felt right. I knew my dad wanted me to go to any school that I felt happy at and he wanted the best for me. But I knew in the back of his head, he was always saying, Wisconsin, you're gonna be a Badger. And obviously I wanted to be, and I did. Since I stepped on campus my freshman year, I felt my dad. I didn't know exactly how, but I felt something. Every time I go to any type of sports, sporting event, I see this person, that person, they come up to me, are you Rob Andringa's daughter? Are you one of the Andringa's daughter? Who, are you Robbie's daughter? And something in me felt so comforted by that. I've had Badger blood ever since I was born. My dad literally gave it to me, and that was where it felt like home. Rob learned at a very young age that sports gave him a chance to learn being competitive, working towards a goal, saying, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna do this because I get that as end result. He said it best when the doctor at the Mayo Clinic said, your therapy is gonna be tough, Rob. This is triple dose therapy. This is mean, nasty therapy, and you're gonna get sick with it. And do you think you can take that? And Rob said it very simple. He said, all my life, I've listened to my coaches. My coaches tell me what to do. You're my coach, you tell me what to do and I will do it. So Rob made up his mind that I'm gonna do this because it gives me my best chance of surviving for as long as possible. I think he learned that from sports, he learned that in life. The way he carried himself every day, 
no matter he got chemo that day, no matter the way he felt, his strength throughout every single day, getting up, caring more about me and my mom than what's truly he was feeling was something I will remember forever. Jeff Solomon, Wisconsin hockey coach, told me after the game, he said, <clears throat> I didn't have to give the team a pep talk or a speech before the game because Rob did it for me. He said, I didn't even have anything more to say. Rob very simply said, my brother has a national championship in 81 and 83. And no matter how many goals I score, how many games we win, he always says, I got two rings. What do you have? And he said to the team, he said, nobody's leaving this rink until I have my ring. And that was it. I did not know how successful my dad was in sports until he passed. And it's crazy to think that, but my dad never brought that stuff up. It wasn't about, I scored this goal, I was named this, I was the All-American here, I played baseball and hockey at, at Wisconsin. It was never these big accomplishments that he would bring up. It was more about, hey, hey D, how are you? And so once his passing throughout cancer, all of his friends would bring up, you know your dad was the all-time this in high school, and you know your dad has the best batting average at Memorial still. I didn't know that. Probably not the greatest thing as his daughter, but. For the most part, my dad never talked about himself. To the last day, he never gave up. He, he walked every day with hope, courage. He was so strong. He made my family strong when we weren't. Um, that's something I'll forever, forever be grateful for.